Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the Astas2 tutorial series. In this video we will continue with the input validation technique and check another useful validator called the visitor validator. Now before we go to the visitor validator, first let's improve our code for the login page. In our book auto web app, we have one login form which contains the user ID and password. And once we submit this login form, the verify login action is triggered. Now in this verify login action, we have this verify login action class which has the user ID and password corresponding to the login form. So once the login form is submitted, the data from the login page is populated in the user ID and password of this verify login action class. Now what we can do is we can create a separate model class called called user and put this user ID and password fields there in that model class instead of keeping them in this verify login action class. After that our verify login action class will have a reference to the user class instead of individual user ID and password properties. So let's create a user class first in a separate package, in a separate model package. Let's have these two fields copied here. Let's generate the getters and setters for these. Okay, so our user class is ready. Now in verify login action class. Let's modify it and Let's create a reference to the user class. Let's remove these getters and setters here. Okay, let's add the getter and setter for the user property. Okay, and here we'll just use user dot get. user id user dot get password okay now we also need to modify our login dot jsp page to match the user class user id and password Okay, so what will happen? The params interceptor will first create the user object, and then it will set the the user ID and password by calling its setter method. Okay, one more change we need to make, and that is in our verify login action validation XML. In this XML file, also we need to have names of the fields to to be changed to user dot user ID and I'll remove this email validator here and make it a normal user ID field. Now once our login is successful, in that case the home.jsp is triggered and in home.jsp we are trying to welcome the user. So here also we need to modify it using user.userid. Okay, so our code is almost ready and we have now introduced a model class instead of user ID and password. Okay, so now let's test it out. This is just for our improvement purpose. This is not anything related to visitor validator. We have still not 
touched anything about the visitor validator this is just for our improvement purpose and uh, before moving forward let's test it out okay first give nothing here in these two fields and login okay so we are able to get the validation errors okay now let's give Ratnesh and Ratnesh here and login okay so we are able to log in and we are able to get the user ID also so our code is working fine okay now let's check our validation XML file here if you see the validation rule the rules are there for the user ID and password of the user class and now suppose if we have a different action which also uses the user object and has the same validation rules for its user ID and password fields then we'll have the similar validation rules in the validation XML file of that action class so there would be duplication of code across different action validation XML file if they are using the same model object so the idea is to remove the validation rules of this, this user ID and password from the action class validation XML file and put it in the model class validation XML file so the same rules will put in the user hyphen validation XML file and from our action class validation XML file we will just refer to them so all the action class validation XML file will just refer to the violation rules of the user class and this reference is actually done using the visitor validator okay now let's see how that is done now first create one XML file in the model package where the user class resides and name it as user hyphen validation not XML okay now put the same validation rules here copy the doc type just copy paste it here instead of user dot user id it will be user id this will be password other things will remain same we know we don't need that indirection here okay this is because the, the xml file is for the user object itself okay now modify the action validation xml file verify login action variation xml file here we don't need all these things in this action we only have one user property so we'll have one user id field and field variable type will be visitor Okay, we can uh, we can leave this message as empty because the message is already coming from the user hyphen validation XML file. Okay, so this is the way it's going to work. Once the verify login action is triggered, the validation interceptor finds a validation XML file for this action class and finds out that it needs to validate the user property using the visitor validator and after that the visitor validator searches for a validation XML file in the package where the user class resides and it finds out one validation XML file there this one then it applies all the rules of the validations to the fields of the 
user object using this validation XML file. So the idea is that we can keep the validation rules in the model objects validation XML file instead of keeping them in the action validation XML file and then refer to those validation using the visitor validator. So this is the way we can remove the duplication of validation rules where different actions are using the same model object and this is the significance of the visitor validator. Okay, now our code is ready to use the visitor validator. Now let's test it out whether it works or not. Okay, let's give nothing here and in these fields and then log in. Okay, so we are able to get the validation error messages from our user validation XML file. So our visitor validator is working fine and this is it for this video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.